hello guys my name is peter evans if you're new here welcome back to my youtube channel and today we are stepping into new domain as we begin the journey with a brand new app called poultry app so you might remember that our previous videos were focused on daily franchise of this our demo evam but now i think it's time to introduce a new app poultry management app so in this exciting new playlist we'll explore the intricacies of raising and managing flocks of chicken using the poultry app to kick things off let's dive into the core models that make up the foundation of our poultry app these models are designed to streamline the management process and ensure the well-being of our feathered friends first up we have the flock source model that allows us to track and categorize sources from which our flocks originate next we have the housing structure model this one here that's all about providing comfortable living environments for our flocks and by defining various types of categories of housing structures we can ensure optimal conditions for the chickens and now let's talk about the star of the show, the flock model. This model represents the individual flocks of chicken within our app. It captures the essential information like hatching dates, chicken types, the current rearing methods, and the housing structures for each flock. Last but not least, we have the flock history model. It's like a time machine for our flocks, allowing us to track changes in rearing methods and housing structures over time. This historical data provides us with valuable insights for future decision making. And so, as we continue this exciting journey of building our ultimate e-farm, now the new franchise poultry app, we'll delve deeper in these models and explore how they come together and create a robust and efficient poultry management system. So, let's dive in. As of the previous tutorial, we had three folders, the daily, the daily inventory, and the e-farm. These two first folders are responsible for the daily app, then we have the eFarm, that is the main project folder. Then today, we've introduced a new app called Poultry. So that's the reason why we have this Poultry. And so let's dive into the content of it. So as you might remember, for an app, we have several files. The ones to do with the choices, the models, serializes, URLs, and views. So let me start by the choices. So this will be the choices for our models in the Poultry app. Over here, we are defining the choices for our models, starting with the flock source choices, where I've defined five of them, this farm, Kenchi, Kukuchik, etc. Then we also have the chicken type choices, where we have the broiler, the layers, and the multipurpose. Proceeding to the housing structure type choices, we have the open-sided shed, the closed shed, the battery cage system, the deep litter house, the semi-intensive housing, and also the pasture housing. And then... We have the housing structure type category choices where we can have brooder or rather chick house, the grower house, the layers house, the broilers house, and the breeders house. And then lastly, we have the rearing method choices where we have the free range, the cage system, the deep litter, the band system, and the pasture based. And so that's it for the choices that we shall be using in our models. So let's proceed to the models. Starting from the very first model of our app, the flock source model, this model would represent the source of flock in our poultry farm and it's a character field of the choices from the flock source choices. And then we move to the housing structure model, which is also another model that represents the housing structure for poultry in our farm. And it has two fields, the type field and the category field, which are both choices from their respective housing structure type choices or housing structure category choices. So this model actually overrides the default clean method by performing some extra validation. And the extra validation that we do is that if the housing structure is categorized under the brooder or chick house, and the type of that housing structure is not either a deep litter or a closed shed, then we throw this error. The brood and chick houses are limited to deep litter house or closed shed structure types. So the rationale behind this is that brooder chick houses need some enclosed environment free from extreme heat extreme cold and also security guaranteed and moving forward to this we also evaluate if the housing structure categories of a breeder house and then the type has been specified as a pasture housing of course pasture housing does not go in hand with breeding because this actually encourages in breeding which is not ideal for breeding houses so we throw this error if this is the case breeder houses are not allowed to have the pasture housing as their structure type and then we override the save method in order to perform the validations just before the 
housing structure type instance is saved to the database. Then moving forward to the flock model, the flock model is a representation of a flock in our poultry farm and it has several fields, the source, which is where our flock is from, the date of hatching, the chicken type, the initial number of birds, the current triaring method, the current housing structure and also the date established. These fields are quite descriptive and I know you can just understand from what they really stands for. So in this model, we have other several properties. First of all, we have the property name. So this will be like a string representation of the name of our flock, which will be the flock. Then the idea of that flock, this is self-generated. Then the date established, the date that we brought the flock in our farm in this format. The percentage B will stand for, for example, I'm recording this on 7th June. So if we save a flock today, it will be June, a string of June, J capital, U, N, E, and then the date, today is 07, and then the year. So that will be the format for the name. And then we have the age in weeks, the age in months, the age in weeks in farm, age in months in farm, of which the age in weeks in farm calculates the age of the flock in weeks. So in this case, we will be calculating the age of the flock based on their hatching date. And then the double forward slash ensures that we return a whole number. So for example, we have the flock of age in days of 22 days. So 22 divided by 7 is 3 remainder 1. So technically, that will be a flock of three weeks old. So the same principle applies for the age in months, but for the age in weeks in farm, it's a little bit different because we are using the date established. The rationale behind this is that a flock can be hatched maybe a week before it's brought into the farm. So having the correct age in weeks in farm and also the age in weeks makes much more sense. And moving forward, we also have some two validator methods, the chicken type update validator and the flock housing validator. These two custom validators will ensure that a lot of logic is also handled as we do the saving update of our flock objects. So the first one, the chicken type update validator, this validates the chicken type during the updates. So, so this is the rationale. Whenever we are updating our flock instance, we can always update maybe the rearing method, maybe the housing structure, but we can never update the chicken type. There is no way you can start with a broiler type chicken, then all of a sudden it changes into a layer. So that's the rationale that happens over here, where if self PK, meaning that this thing is actually something that is being updated because anything that has already been saved into the database as a primary key. So we retrieve the old instance chicken type and then compare with the chicken type that is being updated. If it's not the same, then we throw this error. The validation error cannot update chicken type. And then we move forward to the flock housing validator. And what happens in this validator method is that we are validating the housing structure assigned to the flock based on its chicken type and age. So assuming that we have a flock of layers that's less than eight weeks, technically those are still chicks and they have to be assigned to a housing structure whose category is brooder chick house. And if not, then it will throw this error. Layers between zero to eight weeks can only be assigned to the brooder chick house. And if that's violated, then that will be the error actually. And the similar principle applies to all these other checks. And then we override the save method of this model in order to actually call these validators to be performed. Because if we just leave them that way, they won't be called anywhere. And then after the save, we actually create a flock history object leading us to the new model, the flock history. So the flock history is just a model that represents the history of a flock in terms of it maybe its rearing method, the housing structure changes at a specific time. So what happens here is that whenever we save a flock, so the flock will be like referencing to the flock object that is actually saved, then the rearing method will be the rearing method of that flock at that current time and also the current housing in a similar way. So the flock model has the field date change that is actually automatically logged. So that's the reason why we don't really necessarily have to have it over here. And now that's it for the model. So let's head over to the serializers. And over here in serializers, since we are inheriting from the model serializer, we only specify the flock and the rest will be done for us. So for example, the flock source that had only the single field of source, so that will be serialized for us. Then also the housing structure will be done in a similar way. But now for the flock serializer, we had those methods of the aging weeks, aging months, etc. So since those are just methods that are being called and they actually do not need any manual intervention, they will only be read-only fields. And then we have some two fields over here, the current housing structure that was actually a foreign key to the housing structure. So 
in order to ensure that we do not have issues to do the nested serializer that's actually a problem always with the Django REST framework the package that I'm using to do the serialization and all that stuff actually what it always does is that in that foreign key field the joining table always only avails the primary key of that specific query set or maybe that specific object and so what happens here for the two the current housing structure and the source since they are all foreign key fields all we need to do is to specify the primary key related field for the serializer and it will know what to do and then lastly we have the flow history serializer that actually do not have much except for the fact that it also had the foreign key field to the flock which is also just serialized the same way as we've done for the flock serializer and now that's it for the serializers so let's head over to the views over here in our view set there's nothing much to talk about the first two view sets the flock source view set and the housing structure view set are somewhat the same we only need to specify the query set and so the serializer class at least for now and then the last two view sets the flock history view set is a read-only model view set since everything is done automatically you remember just by the save of flock model we trigger the save of our associated flock history so that's the reason why for this we have the read-only model view set and then for the flock view set we've actually customized the update method of this view set since we also want to ensure that the chicken type over here is also restricted not to be changed because it makes sense that whenever we want to update just like i was saying about the models over here let me just go ahead and check it this one here where we were checking also the chicken type and throwing this error similarly we do that to the view set so we double check both at the view layer and at the model layer the benefit of this is that before even the request is actually handled at the model layer the view takes charge of it and does what's appropriate for it and in this case the view actually checks if the chicken type that is in the request data that is being updated if it is not the same as the chicken type for that very instance that is for that flock and then we throw this error of cannot update a chicken type of an http status of the 400 that is a bad request and so i believe that's enough or rather that's it for the view sets so i'll quickly go over through maybe a single test for the views and so let me head over to the flock view set test case so in this test case we shall be testing for the crude operations on this view set where first of all in our setup method we set up the test case by actually instantiating the api request factory the view sets the urls and the test data for creating listing retrieving updating and also deleting the flocks so first of all instantiate a factory object of the api request factory type over here we then instantiate a callable object view set that will handle the get the post the delete and the put so in this case we've not put the retrieve over here because if we do so you will see we already have an error of the duplicate keys and that's the reason why i've actually separated it away from all these others and the thing is that the code always runs from the top to the bottom and by the time that this code executes and it finds the get that is actually the most recent one that is the one that will be the get retrieve as i was explaining over here it will actually now reassign the list and it will be retrieved and now performing the the listing will be impossible because it will actually go ahead and do the retrieval so that's the reason why i've actually done it this way and then we go ahead and now construct the urls and also instantiate some valid data of course these are subject to the validations that we are talking of the stuff to do with the with the chicken type and also the age and maybe also the category and stuff of that kind i have decided to refine this code explicitly over here like this to give you a glimpse of whatever is happening or rather whatever is needed for all this stuff for example the source field expects a primary key of a flock source object so what we simply do is just create a new flock source object and then pass its primary key and so the first method will be testing if we can create the flock whatever we do is that we just simply pass the url and the validated data to our post request and then we handle that request via our view set where if the status code is 201 then everything is okay of course since we've created a new object over here we shall be having a single flock 
account in our database by that time that is then we also assert that the chicken type is a broiler because our validated data had the chicken type of broiler and that's actually what's being passed over here and then we also test if we can list the flock where we also create a new flock and then pass in the url handle the url by the view set and then now we check if the response status code is 200 okay we also check if the response data is equal to the expected data where the expected data is just a serialized instance of the flock object that we've created over here then we also test the retrieve of the flock where passing the retrieve url with the primary key also specified in order to retrieve the specific flock object that has been created through in this method over here and then we do the comparison if we actually serialize that flock that has been created with the response data that is a dictionary and also a dictionary also we assert if the response status code is http status 200 okay meaning that the flock has been retrieved then we go ahead and also test the update of course this update is also subject to those validation checks that we had in our models so it will do the same pass in the url with also a primary key and check if the update occurs if it's 200 okay also checks in the chicken type and all that stuff we also test the deletion of a flock so it also pass in the primary key so the response of a deletion is that it should be the http status 204 no content after the deletion so we test that and uh, finally for the last two we test if we try updating the chicken type with the same value that will actually not lead to errors because that's actually what we expect not to change the chicken type and also lastly we also check if the chicken type of a different value is saved or rather the request is sent then we shall be having a response status code of a bad request and so that's it for the test i'll just go ahead and confirm to you that everything works okay so if you want to know more about the tests you can as well check at the test models here the test serializers and also the views and also if you want to learn more about how i'm doing this you can as well inform me so that i produce videos that are solely geared towards testing these models but for now we shall only run tests that actually includes all that we've handled today and this is the code the python manage.py we test the poultry and if we do so we see that we have 27 tests that spans from the ones for the models the serializers and also the views and so that's it for this tutorial see you in the next one bye bye